Welcome back. This is Audrey Gordon, and I'm happy to introduce for you day one of the Dataverse Advent Calendar. Today, we're going to take a quick tour of Dataverse as seen from the Power Apps Maker Portal. I'm going to highlight the areas that we're going to focus on, kind of level set our vocabulary, and help you know what's in store for the next 25 days. You probably can guess I cannot exhaust everything there is to say about Dataverse in 15 minutes for 25 days, but it will give you a strong foundation through which you can begin building your own solutions, all right? So on this slide, what you see is a snapshot of the Power Apps Maker portal where you discover Dataverse. Most people discover it there the first time through the Power Apps Maker portal. What you see highlighted in red are the areas I'm going to be focusing on during these 25 days. We'll spend most of our time in this section here. Uh, Dataverse uh, is an, an expand collapse situation, so you'll click on this little chevron to open and close the Dataverse. We won't be talking about connections, custom connector and gateways because I'm making the assumption that if you have been working in the Power Platform in any way, you've already had time to discover what these are. So we're gonna focus on the four things that are used the most with Dataverse. And I keep using this word solutions. We're gonna look closely at this today and kind of understand what do I mean by solution? Um, and those of you that are new to developing applications, don't be frightened by that word. Uh, in this case, it's kind of like a folder but the folder with lots of capability. And the capabilities of that folder are specifically around moving your solution from one environment to another or from one tenant to another, okay? So you don't want to have to copy the app and then copy the flow and then copy the dashboard. It's one solution that needs all of those things. So let's put them all together in a solution, anything that we need, and then we'll deploy it to these environments through an application lifecycle model, okay? So let's go look at this in real life real quick. So we're gonna run over to the Power Apps Maker portal together. And you'll see I'm, I'm here, I'm starting in, um, an environment now I have clicked on solutions because I will continue to stress that this is more important than it than it sends to to be known for especially if you want to uh, iterate your solutions this is really important so I started here and you can see that I have several solutions some of which I've created myself and some of which I've imported so you can also take advantage of other people's solutions you will notice in the community uh, page that I have linked down in the description, anytime I share an app or something with you related to this 25 day series, you will find it to be a solution that you can import into your own solutions, into the environment of choice. Okay, so let's look at some other things. The app launcher, that's an easy thing to look at. This is not specifically related to Dataverse, it's purely Microsoft 365 feature. Why should you have to remember all these URLs? If you click on the app launcher, it launches your apps. So you can pick which app you want to launch. This initially will show your most frequently used apps. You can see Power Apps and Power Automate are among my frequently used apps. But if you click on all apps, you can see all of them that you have available to you. Licensing can apply here, you know, if you don't have the license. Um, and so this is a great place to Re regroup and find yourself, you know, if you're ever looking. If you if you search for power in the all apps, you'll see all three that you probably use very frequently like myself, okay? Dataverse is in the context of power apps, but as I pointed out yesterday in the intro when we talked about what is Dataverse, I pointed out that Dataverse is accessible from all of the services. So there's not a single power platform service that doesn't have a relationship with Dataverse already. They've been buddies and friends for a long time. So you'll always be able to get to Dataverse from any of them. Okay, so that's the app launcher. Kind of a handy tool unrelated to power platform, but more related to Microsoft 365. All right, then over here, I'm just gonna keep running down this bar here. 
is where we find our environments. And you can see that I'm in a demo environment because I'm not Alan, right? Uh, Alan is a fictitious person in a fictitious company called Contoso Electronics. And I'm just using this environment for the demo. Um, but when in your own world, you may want to create your own environment. Okay. And to do that, you go to aka.ms developer plan. So, and when you do that, it's going to take you to this page. And from here, you have already have a Microsoft 365 account. So you don't need to do get started free. You can do existing user. However, Please note that the developer environments, AKA personal environments, um, they are at no additional cost. So developer plans can be considered for the most part free because they're included in any subscription you have for Microsoft 365. All right. Now, those of you that have a personal email account and would like to have a developer plan associated with that, you can use the get started free. But I suggest you use your, your tenant developer environment so that you can access data within your tenant. Okay. Um, but either way, that's how you get yours. And then I'm going to go back here. It will also give you a place to import the solutions that I share with you so that you can reuse them. All right. So that's the point of this. Remember that we did recently add a search here. So, um, you can search through because many companies, I know, for instance, Microsoft, we have many environments and it can get to be long winded to have to scroll through that. So you can use the search there and you can also use the filter. But what happens um, most of the time with this is I'll be telling you to double check your environment. So it won't actually require you to change anything unless you're not in your personal environment. So just double check you're in your personal environment it means glance up here to see if it's the environment named after you. All right. And then the cog here is all about, um, the different things that, that we can do from an administrative perspective and from settings and things like that. We're going to do a lot in the admin center. So think of the admin center that's short for administrator center. It's, it's a place where you can administrator administrate all of your environments. So right now I'm only looking at one environment, but when I click on admin center, I'll actually be looking at more than one right now. We're going to be using this only for the environments. Okay. And this is where you can see the type of environments you'll see developer, maybe sandbox, maybe trial, maybe production. Maybe you'll see default. There's only one default. So you'll always see default, by the way, every tenant has a default environment. I have a whole document I'll share with you about default environments. Um, cause I don't, I won't have a lot of time to like delve into the environments. I just want you to be aware of how to get to your personal environment for now, but to, for your own footnote or, or tip, get to know environments well, because how you set up your environment can affect how performant Dataverse is for your users. So that's the admin. Another thing that's helpful is session details. This is actually where you can uh, find out the information that Microsoft needs for support tickets. So basically you might be getting support through your own organization, which is fine. I might still share this with them because if they need to escalate up to Microsoft, um, they will have all the details that we need to investigate any issues that are being reported. So mostly this is about troubleshooting from a technical perspective and normally it's leveraged most by Microsoft. Then we have developer resources and developers will know why they need these things, but they'll be asked for an organization ID or something as they're building their solutions or setting up things in Azure, they may need these uh, unique identifiers. And so we put them all together here along with the web API endpoint for their convenience. And so, and there's even some additional documentation for developers, which is really awesome for the professional developer audience. And then the last thing I wanted to point out here is power app settings. I don't want to go into all of these. We can do this at another time. It defaults to the language of your browser. Um, so if you set your, your browser, I'm in edge right now. If I set my browser to Spanish, 
Power Apps would be shown to me in Spanish. If I set my browser to French and so on. But you can say, well, I want my browser to stay what it is, right? Maybe my browser is going to stay in English, but I'm doing a demo in Montreal for French. So I might change the language of Power Apps here into French, okay? And leave my browser in English. All right, so that's one helpful thing. I do agree that what, when you read your own language, things become much easier to understand. All right, so let's open up this a little bit and take a couple of seconds to review these. So tables, I think everybody knows what a table is. However, I will tell you, and you will find this out when we get to the day on tables, that tables in Dataverse are much more than tables in most other data platforms. There's a lot built in that you'll get to learn about. And we've got three types of tables. We've got standard, activity, and virtual tables. And so you'll get to learn to use those. Think of tables as like lists, like you might create in SharePoint or Excel, but with a whole lot of extra value for data optimization. Then we have choices. Um, choices are places where you can actually say, I'm going to use a choice list in my application and I'm probably going to use this choice list more than once, right? This is a common choice list for me. And so you might create that choice list and make it globally available so that it could be used with anything, right? Um, so I like, I like doing that and notice that out of the box, I didn't really do much in this environment. There are a couple of custom tables, but I didn't do much. And I've got a ton of tables built in. I've got a ton of choices built in. They're very, they're very CRM friendly. Um, but you can definitely reuse them for any purpose, which means that you don't always have to create a custom table. Take a moment to evaluate what's given to you. It may be enough right out of the box. And I'll give you an example of that when we get to the day on tables. Notice also that whenever we realize there's a lot to look at, we try to optimize uh, visibility so that you're not like overloaded with stuff you don't need to see. So the recommended tab is like most of the commonly used tables. If you go to custom, this will show you any tables that you or your team has created that's using this, this Dataverse instance. Uh, what's important here with this is that the type is still standard for a custom table. And so because a custom table is also standard, you can tell the difference between like a standard table that's built in versus a, a table that you created because it's on this custom tab and because it's not managed, okay? And we'll talk about these words as well. But right now, think of tables as lists on steroids with a lot of value for data optimization, uh, tables being both built in and those that you create custom. The word managed for now, let's take the definition of that to mean whether or not you can edit it. Uh, and. Uh, this is kind of like a very loose definition. Um, maybe think of whether you can delete it might help as well, but we'll talk about this later when we talk about solutions. All right. Um, and then choices, you have a ton built in already. Go look at them before you create a new choice, um, a choice list, because there may be some that you, that's already there. Data flows. Think about this word as break it up into meaning how data flows into uh, Dataverse in this case. Data flows are based on Power Query. So if you've been using Power BI for years and years, then you basically know what a data flow is. It is going to be a Power Query activity that's going to bring data into Dataverse. And it may do it, you may ab be able to do this as a one time or on, on desire method, like just bring it in or you can synchronize by setting up, you know, reoccurring refreshes of data. So really cool. We'll have a day to talk about this as well. Um, but once you start bringing in data from all over the place, plus using your Dataverse data, and you may be using data across environments in some cases, then you'll want to think about Azure Synapse. Um, Azure Synapse allows you to do many things for data optimization. Um, uh, especially what I see used the most is the ability to query the data uh, in such a way that you're familiar with, such as a SQL select statement or um, 
using a Spark statement. And, and you can query the data to create your own unique tables from those queries that you can use reuse again in Power BI, et cetera, for analytics. So really cool um, scenarios associated with that. We will have two days to talk about Azure Synapse, which would be towards the end of the 25 days. I'm basically doing this from kind of like, it's going to get easier. It's going to get a little bit more complex as we move through, but at no time will it get over your head. And that's probably the most, you know, technically, um, uh, technically aware, uh, thing that I will talk about in the 25 days. Um, then we will get some chances to talk about using Power Automate and Power Virtual Agents with, with uh, Dataverse. And we'll, we'll touch on AI Builder and how cards can help as well. Uh, and I've already talked about solutions. So basically, that's it. We're going to talk about those areas. Let me just make sure I didn't forget anything. Yes, I covered all of that and that and that. So this is what we're going to talk about during these 25 days. I hope you're going to be um, engaged in, and get your own environment and try out things. You can even try them out while, while you're watching. And I look forward to continuing this tomorrow as we continue our Dataverse Advent calendar for day two coming up tomorrow.